All right, so the teardown on the turbo install has begun, as you can tell. Let me catch up with where I'm at currently. Oil is drained, coolant is drained, wheel liner is out on the turbo side, belly pan is obviously out, have the engine cover out. Next thing we're gonna be doing is taking the coolant overflow tank out, the vacuum canisters out, and then the heat shield down there out, just to get a little bit more room up here. Uh, next thing we'll be doing after that is uh, obviously dropping the subframe. Now, the way I'm gonna approach this install, there's a couple of videos from reputable BMW DIY channels. You're probably familiar with those channels, but I have them earmarked and I'm gonna use those as my guide uh, and kind of my lead actually. Then I also have my Bentley manual that I'm gonna be able to refer to. Now, I've never done a turbo install in any car before, my own car or anybody else's for that matter. So I'm equal parts excited and cautious about it. I have a couple of months before the Weather will get nicer here in Ohio to be able to drive this car anyway, so I might as well utilize this time to do it right and take my time and learn some things. While I'm in here, there's a couple of other issues that I'm going to address. Uh, I've mentioned the water pump and some gaskets. So the three main gaskets that typically leak on these cars are leaking on mine, so I wanna get all that cleaned up as well. I have the intercooler out, partly to make it easier to drain the coolant without making a huge mess, and also too, because I wanna address some things up front. I'm gonna make a separate video on modifying these lights. So we all know that these lights get modified by most people. I'm gonna do that for mine too. It's not gonna be anything overly drastic, but it's gonna be, you know, cool. I wanna make it match the rest of the car. So I'll drop another video on when I do that. Next thing we're gonna do is, like I said, take care of those things up top. Then I'm gonna to get to dropping the subframe. As you can see, we're accumulating a pretty decent pile of parts that I've removed. I do have this area freed up, so we'll be able to reach those top fasteners on the manifolds. I also wanted to mention too, if you're gonna do this job or, or any job that requires removing the subframe, you're likely gonna need this engine hoist. You can get them anywhere. I got mine at Harbor Freight. I've used it on several jobs so far and it's done the trick. Even have a safety chain on for good measure. Let's go ahead and move on to taking this subframe out. Front subframe off the car. So now that it's on the ground, I wanted to, to illustrate how you get it off the car. I think this is a better way of doing it than trying to be under the car and get footage of it. Uh, there's plenty of uh, DIY videos online. In fact, ones I'm using to get to this point that will show you the process of taking it off while it's on the car, but I wanted to do it a different way. So in order to get to the point where the subframe can come off, first and foremost, you need to disconnect the control arm. So there's one up front, uh, one in the middle, one up front, one in the middle. You need to take uh, the sway bar off. Then you need to disconnect the uh, 16 millimeter nut that goes on top of the motor mounts. You can do that from the engine bay looking down. Um, and then what else? Oh yeah, and then these three screws that hold on a plastic cooling line. You wanna make sure before you drop this, you remove those, otherwise you'll probably break that coolant line and then you'll have to replace it and it's a pain in the butt. So you wanna to try to avoid that. Now, then the last thing you wanna do is take the steering rack down. So this jack handle is um, representing the steering rack. So basically what you do is once you get all of those components off, then there's three bolts on each side that connect the subframe to the chassis. Once you get those off and you have this movable, then all you're doing is you're moving, I should, I should uh, also state that I'm uh, oriented toward the front of the car. So you're gonna move the subframe past the driver's side tie rod. So you're pushing this toward the driver's side of the car until you can get the tie rod to slip over top. And then you just simply bring it back this way until you can get the dry, or the passenger side tie rod to slip over the top. And then basically the subframe will just be out in your hands and on the ground. So hope this helps. Like I said, there's good DIY videos out there, ones I followed to get to this point. So if you wanna see the process while it's on the car still, go ahead and check those out. As you can see with the subframe removed, it's wide open to the turbos. One thing I want to point out while I'm over on this side is the amount of oil coming from the usual suspects here. So the oil pan gasket's going to get replaced. The amount of oil right here on the water pump, I'm pretty sure that's coming from the oil filter housing gasket. Either that end or the valve cover gasket, both of those will get changed too. So yeah, as you can see, it's wide open to the turbos from this end. Next thing we're going to do is get the downpipes out and then on to the next step. All right, so both down pipes off. I have them hanging here by the back O2 sensors. There's not a whole lot of tension on these, so it's not gonna hurt anything. I have the uh, front O2 sensors removed and labeled. I have the engine, engine mount bracket. I have that pulled off as well. And if you notice too, I have the fasteners sticking in the bracket. And then also too, I have the fasteners for the down pipes on the exhaust. 
the fastener and the chassis for the subframe. So this is a good time to mention that, you know, I don't know what some people do. Maybe they just bag and tag uh, their fasteners. I like to do a combination of that and just putting the fasteners back where they go when I take things apart. This way here, when you come back through to, the, to do the reinstall, all of the fasteners are right where they need to be and you're not getting things mixed up. Now, I know for some people watching, that's gonna go without saying, uh, but I just wanted to mention that as a best practice. So now you can see we have an even clearer shot to the turbos. So we're gonna move on to the next right step. There in the middle, you'll see the water pump and thermostat housing. So I pulled that coolant hose off that connects the two. Uh, now I have a setup like this and I would recommend this. So I just have a bucket and a drain pan here right underneath that area. So when you pull that off, even though I've already drained the coolant from the radiator, there's some that stays in the system at that point. If you pull that hose off without anything to catch it, you'll get drenched. So there's a pretty decent amount of coolant that remains there. Just FYI. Water pump and thermostat housing off the car. So you wanna make sure when you do this part that you have enough rags, paper towels, and a drain pan, like I've mentioned, because it can get a little bit messy as you're taking the hoses off and disconnecting these two things. There's that little bit of coolant that's just hidden away in all those nooks and crannies and it pops out. So you want to make sure you have that stuff at the ready. Now I'm replacing both of these in my car. My car has 55,000 miles. That may be a little premature. Some may, may say, but since I'm already in here and I see what it takes to get to this point, I'm just going to go ahead and spend a couple hundred bucks and replace them with new. Now, the way I took it apart is I started by disconnecting the hoses from the thermostat housing. I took my time. Some of those connections are plastic. You wanna make sure you don't break them. Um, so I just took my time persuading them, disconnected the thermostat housing from the water pump, and then disconnected the uh, water pump from the block. Pretty straightforward, but again, you just wanna make sure you take your time and have some rags and stuff ready to uh, clean up any messes. Front turbo is out. Getting these turbos out is pretty straightforward as far as you know what needs to be done. The tricky part, at least for me, is getting the uh, oil feed and, and return lines and the coolant feed and return lines off the center section of the turbo. So they're just fastened in. They look something like this as far as the part that goes inside the turbo, uh, but you're gonna have to pry them out. I used a combination of a flat blade screwdriver, wiggling back and forth, prying up and down, making sure to be careful so I didn't break anything. And then also you can even grab some of them with uh, some channel locks and wiggle them back and forth. And eventually they'll come out. But for me, it was a tedious process. So just be prepared for that. If you don't have yourself an extended T45 Torx bit, you'll wanna grab one of these. I did not. I looked locally and couldn't find one at uh, any of the places that sells tools. So I picked mine up on Amazon. The reason you'll need that, the fasteners that fasten the manifold to the block look something like this. It's a combination 11 millimeter outside, T45 Torx inside. Some of them sit so close to the actual manifold that you don't have enough room to squeeze an 11 millimeter socket around it. So you're forced to go the T45 route. Um, the rear turbo has two that are so close to the wastegate actuator to where a short T45 doesn't give you enough room to be able to get it on there and then turn it. So you're forced to do it from further back over by the frame rail and using an extended T45 bit is what will allow you to do that job. So if you don't have one of these, pick one up. Finally got both of these turbos out. Front turbo, rear turbo. Front turbo, pretty straightforward, not really that hard. Rear turbo, complete pain in the ass. Frame rail, firewall. Had to take the wastegate actuator off because the frame rail and the firewall, how tight it is back here, getting these coolant and oil lines off the center section of the turbo, for me anyway, was a pain. Uh, they were frozen in there pretty good. So I was probably prying in there and grabbing and smashing my hand against the frame rail for probably a good 30 minutes. And when all that stuff comes free, every single time you get doused with coolant and oil. So be prepared to have it in your face, uh, on your hair, uh, all over the place. So just be prepared for it. It's a doable job, but it's a pain in the ass. If you're doing this job on jack stands, I'll pray for you. But uh, me doing it here on these quick jacks makes it a little bit easier. But I, I would venture to say the easiest way to do this job if you're not pulling the motor out of the car is to do it on an actual lift. Good luck. My M54 without turbos. So here's where we're at. Next thing we're going to do is some prep work to get everything ready for the install. I've already gone ahead and taken out the donut gaskets and the exhaust ports. That's pretty easy. Just use a pick tool, wedge it in between the gasket and the block and pull them down. You want to have some safety glasses on because that gasket material will rain, rain down on you if you don't get in your eyes. You can see some of the studs came out. Some of them stayed in. So I'm going to pull those out because I have new ones and get that surface nice and clean and ready for the install. I'm also going to take out these factory 
inlet locations, those are coming out. I'm going with hot side, so I don't need to worry about putting any new ones in. And then this nasty leaking oil pan gasket's getting done next. Oil pan off the car. So I'm gonna be changing the gasket, but I decided not to do it within this video. I recorded separate footage of the procedure to take the oil pan out, and I'm gonna film footage for putting the oil pan gasket back in. Reason is, is I think a separate video could help other people, and rather than try to cram it all into this one. So if you wanna check out the process of changing the oil pan gasket, if you're at this point already, I'll go ahead and link that video in the description and check it out. All right, the oil pan's in, torque to spec, all cleaned up. So that'll take us to the end of this video. I am splitting these turbos up into two videos, this teardown, and then the next video will be the install. And as you can see, I've already got the first step of the install laid out, ready to go. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned for the next one.